The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino style games to choose from, you too could win life changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to chumbacasino.com and give them a world. That's chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary, void, or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. A great meal in a great restaurant requires planning ahead, reservations, waiting, and finally getting seated. Caviar is a new food delivery app for people that are passionate about amazing food, but would rather dine at home. And just for our listeners, Caviar is offering 50% off two orders, up to $20 value per order. And all you have to do is put in the offer code NYCPOD22 at checkout. Remember, that's 50% off two orders, up to $20 value per order, with offer code NYCPOD22. Download the Caviar app and use offer code NYCPOD22. They say that home is where the heart is. Maybe that's why so many fall in love with Big Pine Key and Florida's Lower Keys. With epic ocean views, unspoiled wilderness, sandy beaches, abundant wildlife, RV resorts, and Stock Island's rustic charm, Florida's Lower Keys don't skip a beat. For more about the Lower Keys, visit flakeys.com slash lower keys. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. From Asmacore Studios near Detroit, Michigan, oh, man. it's the Weedsman Podcast. I have no idea what's going on. And now, you have smoked yourself retarded. Here are the Weedsmen. You want to get hot? I'm Chris. I'm Aaron. What's dropped, going on over there? I just there? dropped my shit. Hit the core button, shit goes crazy. Drop my vape. <laughs> oh man, I made it. You made it to oh, what? Since, since last we met. Oh, I got the flu out of the way early this year. Man, everybody's been getting this fucking flu that like lasts for four days or more. Yeah, at least it, and, at least it did it over the weekend. I uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, like, I'd rather have the days off work. <laughs> right. Well, I'm like self-employed at this point. So, yeah. 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 You know, I need to work. You're doing it, di- it different, helps generate, different math. Yeah, yeah. It helps generate revenue, so you know the paycheck's clear. Yep. When I work. So it, yeah, man, kick my ass. Found out COVID tests aren't free anymore. What happened to no American slash no Michigander will have out of pocket costs for mm. COVID? Or at yeah, least at, did, did at you, least at Walgreens, I got like a half dozen of those bitches for free at Walgreens, and I went on Sunday, and they were like one hundred twenty nine dollars, yeah. and I will not be paying. Hundred and twenty nine bucks for what? One test? To shove the Q tip in my nose and give it Shut to the me. fuck up. That te- no. Well I didn't <laughs> go through with it. Didn't you I didn't you get the home test sent to you? No. You didn't get like the they sent that to every household. Well you had to request like little, it. Oh, you didn't request it? Yeah. Uh, no. Mm. You fucked up. Well, because by well, because by the by the time they were sending them out, I was like fresh out of half. I was like I'd recently had it. I was like, yep. I'm good for a while. I don't need to. Yeah. And aren't they the the rapid antigen tests too? Aren't those the ones that are worse than a coin flip? Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> like like I heard uh, Sam Harris on on Bill Maher's podcast. Like the rapid yep. antigen test, the the numbers again, those are not good. Yeah. But anyway, that's the guy who knows numbers. Yes. I did not know who that man was. Oh yeah. Until I heard that, and now I want to know. Oh, he's a smarty. All about this guy. Yeah, he's like, uh, he's got to be one of the most respected people out there right now when it comes to really. It just seems like opinions about everything. Yeah, and he sounds like he uses like logic to drive his bus. Yeah. Like I couldn't tell you who the guy votes for. Right. Yeah. Like I couldn't tell you his stance on COVID. Yep. Like he was all over. No, Penn Jillette's been a long time fan of his. That's where I first picked up on Sam Harris. He is—he's a smarty pants. That one. Yeah. We need more people like him. An actual smarty pants, not someone yeah. who like thinks he's smart. Yeah, you know some some people look at smart people like that, and they're like, "That's who should be running things." I'm like, no, that's kind of a specialty, right? Like politics is a specialty. Knowing shit is a specialty. Never the twain shall meet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. the like, what politics? What poli- What politicians should be doing is looking to guys like Sam Harris for the knowledge. 
you know, find the smart people, see what find they say. Find the smart people and, yeah, have them help guide you. But we don't do that. No. No, I've noticed we are very, at least the American political system, it is not proactive. It is very, re- they wait for shit to happen yeah. and then do shit. Yeah, oh, like, well, we'll, we'll get to McConnell, who's, the turtle is still fucking around. How come we got rid of Pelosi, but we can't get rid of McConnell? Like that, that's a cancer that needs to be cut out of politics right there. This guy fucking brags about, all he does is brag about everything that he's blocked. Yeah, he's, really? a, he's a professional cock blocker. Yeah. Like, that's great if you're fucking defense on a football team. Yeah. But when it comes to politics, you gotta be, you gotta have a message. That's why they've got their fucking hat handed to them on this. They have no actual message, no unified message other than like things that scare people like abortion being now, you know, people now see the connection between gay rights and their own rights, you know? Yeah. And they, and they realize that like if you're actually looking to like roll back, you know, protections for gay marriage and stuff like that, uh, what's next? You know? But anyway, getting off on a tangent right. here. What were we talking about? Uh. <laughs> I guess it's the end of the year. We all, yeah, well, everyone's gotten sick. Well, I was reading about, so the, uh, the connection between cold weather and sick. They they kind of zeroed in on something. I saw that. I didn't click on it. What did, what yeah. did they have to say? It's really sciency, and I didn't quite follow all of it. I always worked under the assumption that, like in cold weather, your shit's like dried out. Like you know, everything is like all the humidity is in the air is like frozen, so everything dries out. We know that just from the winter time getting scra- cracked skin, cracked lips, and all this shit, right? All that mucus in your nose that is supposed to protect you from invading things, mm-hmm. including viruses and whatnot, uh, you know, that shit dries up too. And uh, so I just figured, well, it's, you know, it's not catching as much of the. Oh, we're the, playing the guess. Okay. So, the shit in the snot. So can I give my guess? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, my guess is something to do with your immune system because you're cold, your body's working harder to keep your. Ninety eight point six. It might be. It might be that. Just that. So they they saw that even like a a seven degree drop in temperature of your nose area, just the nose area, which is often the thing that's sticking out. Mm-hmm. You know, often the thing that is the coldest when you're outside in the winter time. Just a seven degree drop in temperature will inhibit the production of these like. I forget what they call them, and I I can see if I can look up the story, but it's not really that important. But basically, the the nose when it senses a virus or bacteria in the in the nose, it immediately starts producing these kind of like fake receptor cells that uh, kind of mimic whatever I guess blood, whatever it would like bond to the virus would would you know attach to. In the body, so it's trying Only to fake it out. It's trying to fake it out, right? It gives it something to cling to. It's like, hey, c- come over here, right? But that thing that it's clinging to is not going to stay in the body. It's going to get washed out with the snot, you know. So then, probably triggers a sneeze reaction or something like that, and you, or the you know, the the uh, the snot just takes care of it on its own. But that's the idea: is that it actually like it's kind of like a yeah a glue trap. For viruses, just traps it and then just flushes it out. So it never bonds to and invades a cell inside the body and is able to reproduce inside the body. So getting sick, does it mean your tip of your nose warmed up before you flushed it out? I hope so. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I think it's just a matter of keeping the, the nose warm in general. The nose is warm. It's able to produce these receptors, these fake oh, I guess receptors. So when it's cold, it doesn't produce the receptors. Yeah, when it's cold, oh. it, it can't it can't produce these as well. And I don't think it produces the snot as well. It's like all these factors that it uses to help protect the the rest of the body from you know because it's like it's not your biggest opening, but it's the one that's open all the time, right? <laughs> you know what? It makes. I sat in an office. 
like about same distance from you with somebody all last week mm -hmm. who was sick. And it's fucking cold in that office, and I was cold all week, and I ended up getting sick. Yep. That would make sense. Yep. Based yeah. on the conversation we just had. Yeah, if it, if it was warmer environment, your body's natural defense was probably what it kicked in. Now, of course, there's other factors, you know, but primarily it seems like cold and flu virus that just, that's just transferred through through the air, you know. You know, good old droplets. Yeah. I, don't know, I thought that was interesting. I mean, probably won't change anything because actual science doesn't have an actual, have a real impact. You ready for the tridemic, man? You know. Do you hear about this? If there's, well, <laughs> uh, no, I <coughs> enlighten me. But let me finish this thought. I, uh, you know, even if we did have like not full on masks, but just like a nose piece, just to keep our noses warm in the winter time, I'm sure there would be an equal number of people like saying that that was I, doesn't like once they would a decade anti-nose warmers I, I think like once a decade doesn't someone try to come up with the nose muff and then we go you look like an idiot and then we reject <laughs> it as a society you know we are vain in that way yes and uh yeah i mean i don't think there's there's no way to wear something that just covers your nose and not look weird yeah it's not going to happen. I mean, if you wear a ski mask, you'll get around the place. Yeah. But you wear the CDC says you got to wear masks again, so you, you warm your nose that way, right? Yeah. The tridemic. So what, what's R a tridemic? RSV, the oh, flu, yeah. and COVID. Yeah, all of a sudden, everybody's got RSV. I was for, for kids. You know, the kids. Well, it's apparently really dangerous in kids. So. Well, it's apparently it's just like the flu. Apparently, if you are old or a baby, you do not want to get RSV. Mm -hmm. What does it stand for, anyway? I was told last night, and I forgot, because we... Uh, respiratory syncytial. So that's why we call it RSV. Yeah. <laughs> Virus. RSV. Uh, Common receptor... Re respiratory virus that usually causes mild cold-like symptoms. Wait, what was the first word in that? I There's, just said it was a common there, respiratory. Com well, what are we worried about? Yeah. Common. It can be serious, especially for infants and older adults. Just a it's like the like, flu. Yeah, but I've had, you know, I've had two kids, and when they were, and when they were infants, uh, we never heard of this shit. I don't know. Maybe it's just called something different. Yeah, I think so. Maybe they didn't know the difference between, you know, flu and RSV, or, or they just, did, and or maybe just, just wasn't. like your kid's got a cold. Right. Give them this baby aspirin. Yeah. Give them orange juice. Their fever stays over 102. Give me a call. Yeah, that's the thing. Like kids get sick all the time, and at no point, you know, and they went to the doctor too. You, they get a high enough fever. They're like, doesn't matter if you got to take them to the doctor. But too, and it's the but it, and even as an adult, it's the same treatment for everything. It's monitor your fever, get rest, push fluids, make sure you eat. It's the, it's the same. Mm -hmm. it, it's pretty much when I had COVID, when I had uh, earlier in the year, when I had the flu last weekend. It's what I did. Even j made sure I jammed a couple meals in my face on a day, a couple of days when I really wasn't hungry because your body needs fuel to fight the infection. Yeah. Oh. You shoved a couple meals in your face. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said shoved a couple needles in your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some... man, I was riding a dragon, man. Uh, maybe you're just getting some lip you know what filler. No, fixes the flu. Heroin. <laughs> just, you're, you're just uh, getting some duck lips yeah. for your insta. Getting some, getting some Botox <laughs> while I got the flu. Who is, uh, there was a guy, there's, uh, what's his name? Are you talking about the I liver king? That. The liver king? The, what the guy? No, I, I, what's the liver? Now I want to know what's the, the, guy, what's the, the liver the king? The influencer who's been talking about eating animal organs. And, no, what is his deal? He, like he's eating the shit raw. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, from, from what I've heard, it's it's a bunch of bullshit. I guess he's a snake oil salesman or whatever. Or, but yeah, because he's saying like you can have you can be cut like me. You just got to eat raw organ meat. Um, yeah, but like, <laughs> you don't get abs just from eating certain things, right? <laughs> abs are not naturally occurring phenomena. Correct. They just don't <laughs> happen. Yeah. 
Yeah, you just eat some organ meat and then lay under a heat lamp and they just pop right up. Like cavemen were just walking around shredded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, they had probably they probably had doughy bodies. Like the whole with, world just looked like a, pro- a gay club. They probably had a lot of muscle, certainly, because they had to like, you know, they had to do everything by by human energy, but also they probably had a lot of flab on them too because they wanted to store some some meat for those lean times. Well, st- they also didn't have processed food, so who knows what they I mean? Like I yeah. said, they could have just been just shredded and cut. If they wouldn't have like you got to like lift some rocks to get abs. You know, you got to do <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to. I don't know. You got to like bear wrestle or something. <laughs> Like it doesn't it doesn't happen from farm work. I don't think you can get some packs, right, or some fucking. Maybe they guns. have Fight Club. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they could have had Fight Club, and we would have never found out because yeah, the, first rule, <laughs> first rule, Fight Club. Don't paint depictions of Fight yeah. Club on cave wall. <laughs> don't front Fight Club. <laughs> no, who was I? I don't know. There is some guy. I mean, if maybe if, I don't even know who he is. He was on a talk show, and he was famous. He had lip fillers, and they got them dissolved. And like, that was, he was like coming out of that like a man. Name. Yeah, like yeah, like he a had man. Lip fillers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, let me. 2022 parlance. Uh, person assigned male at birth had lip fillers. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Lewis. Do you know who Jeff Lewis is? Jeff no. Lewis shows his new look after dissolving his lip fillers. And this guy looked like a freak. I just hope that, because apparently this guy is, uh, let's see, he was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Is that a TV show? Yes. Is it Network? Oh, oh yeah. No, no, uh, it's Bravo. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Uh, it, uh, how do I, there's no tactful way of saying this. It's a gay channel. There's a there, there's a gay late night TV show. This is it. Yeah. Okay. Because he has all the housewives on and shit. Like he has all the he has celebrities yeah. on and too. But well, this is a uh, lot of reality show talk. This is his. apparently from Bravo TV that I'm reading this. Who says on his Sirius XM podcast? Excuse me, Sirius XM is satellite radio. Not everything is a fucking podcast. Listen, they, no, they, they do have a pod. <laughs> They don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> Wait, this that... actually is a podcast. Oh, really? Yes. No, they they're pivoting too late. Put it that oh, way. Okay, okay. Uh, he detailed how his dermatologist, Doctor Salar Hazani, was one to point out his migrated lip filler, noting it wasn't willing to do any work on the podcast until they took care of the issue. What happened was my filler from twenty years ago migrated to into both sides of my upper lip. And created like two balls. I'm trying to find before and after pictures. This guy's lips. He says, I didn't know it was filler. I thought it might be silicone. Well, it's something. It's one of the things that you put in your fucking face. Right? So I found a before and after picture, but apparently it's of his eyelid surgery. Oh. This is not a. This is like you shove a, an M M&M and M up your nose, and then you're like a week later. I feel something hard up there. Like, is that a marble or something? <laughs> no, maybe it's the thing you shoved in your face. Yeah, remember when you had a doctor injection so you, you into forget, your face? Did you forget that you had lip fillers? Why can I not find before and after pictures of this guy's lips? That's probably the gayest sentence I've ever said. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess this is a unique uh, thing. I was hoping this was going to be reversing the trend. But I also wonder, too, because... Because uh, lip fillers is fucking gross, man. But, uh, too, I also wonder if, it, if if it's drastic, because there's been a lot of things, like, allegedly, like, t- uh, three or four years ago, uh, mm-hmm. Carrie Underwood had to get plastic surgery on a part of her face. She had a, a quote-unquote, gruesome scar from an accident at home. You look at before and it looked like nothing fucking happened. Yeah. It looked like it could have been, like... Two two of the same picture next to each other, like before, <laughs> after. Well, there, there is a video going around of Katy Perry at a concert, and she's had some part of her performance where she's just kind of standing there posing uh, some, during some dramatic moment, and all of a sudden her right eye just shuts, just the right one. Really? <laughs> and she like kind of 
pulls at it a little bit, like tugs at the eyelid and it pops back open and then it kind of half shuts again. And she's trying to like hold it open with her finger. What did her fucking Botox expire while she was performing? I guess. That discount eye surgery? I don't know, man. She missed a payment and they fucking activated the shit by remote. <laughs> I guess Candace Owens got in trouble on her podcast. Or no, this was on her Twitter. Yeah. She had, she had posted on her Twitter a thing about, uh, about Botox in the, in the face in general, I think, but mostly, uh, she says, uh, here, requested male opinions only on the topic of injections as part of her research for a project she's working on in social media. Mutating people's appetites. Serious so question for men. Do you think that the Botox slash filler, yes, that's she's talking about both, fake lips look is attractive? No, do you all look weird? Yeah. Do you envision long-term relationships with girls that look that way? No, you all look weird. Male opinions only, please. Working on a show about social media mutating our appetites. So, yeah, no, I, absolutely. I, Dude, who are they doing this for? I was watching the the news this morning because I'm old now, mm-hmm. apparently, and I watch it when I get ready. But there's a news anchor around here. She has always been smoking hot, and she can't even be like she's got to be maybe like a late thirties. Yeah, but she's been on the air for like ten years, mm-hmm. and I saw her this morning, and fucking all of a sudden her mouth is now all of a sudden I'm like, no, you went and got the real housewife fucking mouth, oh, like. God. Like you're not even forty yet. What are you doing? I like, don't like. And what are they seeing? Like, ladies, you all we can see it. You all look the same, and you look weird. Yeah. Like we could see it. We could see it in your mouth. We could see it in your face. You can see it in your eyes. It looks weird, and you all look the same. Yeah. Yeah, and you you think you're gonna just be able to piecemeal this for the rest of your life? The rest of you is gonna age. And all the work that you had done is going to stand out like a sore fucking thumb. At this point, when you your can... when your face starts to sag naturally, you won't have natural attractive wrinkles. You'll have these weird cross section things of like you'll look like uh, uh oh what's his name the wrestler dude not the wrestler but he played in the movie the wrestler Mickey Rooney or yeah. Mickey Rourke Mickey Rourke yeah you'll look like fucking Mickey Rourke. Yeah, that's it, what you're gonna. That's what you're all gonna fucking look like. And listen, it ain't dudes telling you to do this now, ladies. All right, I think it's you telling you to do this. You're gonna look like a pug that was smacked with a two by four. Because I've found that you and I are not in the minority in this opinion. In the last few years, it's like we we're not telling you to do this to yourself, ladies. Because if you asked us, you look fucking weird. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Grow old. It happens to us all. Yeah, I mean, like, I've never been for breast implants. I mean, I don't know. Like, I've never been, I don't think I've ever been with a woman who had breast implants. But, so I don't know if I've ever actually felt them. But, like, what's the point? You can't knock until you've tried it. Yeah, all right. But I I get at least that there's, like, an aesthetic thing that you're going for. Hypothetical situation. Yeah. You go home. Uh Uh-huh. Your your old lady's like, hey, (laughs) guess what? Guess what I want to (laughs) get? Fake breasts. I mean, are you? You're, yeah, you're not. You're not shooting this conversation <laughs> down. <laughs> I'm at least mulling it over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. That's, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that, that's also it's come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's well, start no, with I, that. I mean, I don't know her. I'm it's just, come I'm, a long I'm way. Just saying hypothetical. <laughs> just if you went home and your girlfriend was like, "I would like to get fake breasts." If she was like, wouldn't you like me? You would me, not shoot it down. Wouldn't you like me to have perky C cups for the rest of my fucking life? I'd be like, eh, yeah, who wouldn't? Yeah, like, I couldn't wait. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, but if but- she's like, yeah, I'm going to step up to a size where it stretches the skin on my chest at weird angles so it looks like I've got two circus tents on my chest. Well, yeah, no, the, there is too big. Yeah. It's got to be proportional to you. You can't be 4'11 and want to roll like Dolly Parton. Yeah, so Candace Owens had to go on Tucker Carlson and apologize, I guess, for Botox Gate, as they're calling it. Come on. Of course. First of all, I'm with uh, Bald Brian from the Adam Carolla show on this. Like, fuck your gate. Yes, uh, me too. Like, just stop. Don't put it on the end of anything because you've made it meaningless. It's fucking gaped out non term. But 
at least keep it to massive conspiracies, right? A one-person controversy where somebody says something and then has to apologize for it is not a gate. So, what does that have to do with but, any but, gate? So why are people? Why should she apologize? Is she mad? She asked only dudes. Uh, you know, that's a good question. Um, so she's very surprised to ever sort of landed in a puddle of uh oh, which I guess is pile of shit. Yes. However, uh, women defended their use of Botox and filler. So many men responded to Owen's tweet stating their preference for natural lips. However, women weren't asked, <laughs> but offered their opinion anyway. Oh, that happens. <laughs> uh, and in her tweet, I'm not saying this. She specifically said in her tweet, she's looking for men's opinions. And a, and a woman uh, gave her it anyway, huh? Defended their use of Botox and, and fillers while arguing that men often cannot recognize when a woman Bull has had cosmetic shit. work done. We can see it a mile away. Lady. <laughs> you keep telling yourself that. Because yeah. clearly you people are seeing something different when you look in the mirror, right? Yeah. You look in the mirror and you pout your lips just right and you get it at the right angle and you're like, I look fabulous. And I bet you do. And you probably look great for like that one photo on Instagram. But take a 30 second video of you talking and it's like, yeah, it's like I'm talking to somebody that's trying to eat a pool inflatable. Yeah. And to, and it, and fine. It, and if men can't tell, I want you to put on social media a picture of you before and after your work. If it's so subtle and nobody can tell, I want before and after pictures of you. We can tell. Owens followed up with a tweet saying, Botox is now trending mostly because women are upset that I asked men a simple question. I did not expect this. But you know what? That roundabout just proved my theory, kind of, or at least bolstered my point. Yeah. It's the women doing it to each other, isn't the men? Yeah. The men were asked, like, said, no, don't do it. And the women were like, I want to do it. This is a, it's a fucking drag queen contest that they're in with each other. What's the Dr. Drew saying? The female, female impersonators? Yeah. (laughs) When you watch one of the real housewife shows and it looks like six of the same bitch, like, are y'all going to the same surgery? Y'all pick the same face? Y'all just bring in a Barbie doll and go, make me look like this. Yep. Yeah, hey, you know, speaking of good lips, though, you know I had good lips, R.I.P. Christy Alley. Oh, yeah. She did have, she had, I think she had the type of lips that everyone's going for with these filters. Because, like, there's a picture of her. Now, I don't know if she's had work done, but this looks natural, right? This looks like Christy Alley. Yes. That's how she always looked. I and would. she's yes. She's got yeah, nice pucker to her lips, a nice full bottom lip. She's kind of got that heart shape on the top. Like that's what they're going for. But guess what? Like that's just a roll of the dice. Okay? Yeah. You know, genetics. <laughs> yeah, like work with what you got. You know, this was it used to be before fillers and whatnot. It was the like lip liner and then some people would try and like go outside of their actual lip to make it look like they had more lip than they actually yeah. had with lipstick. Yeah, they'd like, like draw it on. That ain't gonna last. But yeah, uh, Christy Alley, uh, colon cancer, man, at 71 and went fast. Probably doesn't sound like she, you know, wasn't something that she caught early. Well, she's also a Scientologist. Yeah. There's also that variable. Yeah, probably not <laughs> as great with the doctor's could've, visits. <laughs> but could have. Probably saw eighty one. Put a put a, yeah, a little too much faith in uh I don't know, whatever L. Ron Hubbard's alien over. You ain't gonna do are. shit against the cancer <laughs> raging in your colon. Yeah. Go to a fucking hospital. That's yeah, still, you know. Sad, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um Rebecca, she? Rebecca Howe. Yeah. And then the mom in the talking baby movies. That's what I was trying to think of what the other I knew she had a movie career too, but I couldn't I was like, what was the one that she was known for? It was well, Look Who's Talking, wasn't it? Yeah, she got knocked up by George Siegel. Yeah. Yeah, she was the, uh, she was, I think, an unplanned replacement for, um, uh, for the character of Diane, played by Shelley Long, right? Yeah, she was like the opposite. Yeah, yeah they, of went, Diane. they went, they went, they like, went, yeah. Instead of flighty, the they went way. for like, 
strong and intelligent. Yeah. Well, Diana was intelligent, too, but in a different way. Yeah, but she was... Diana was more snobby. Rebecca was more... Down to earth. Yeah. Yeah. I thought... I was always more of a fan of, of Diane, of, uh, of Rebecca over Diane. Yeah. Shelly Long's great. She's an attractive woman and everything, but like the whole like flighty aspect of it. And I you know she's playing a character, but like it just didn't do it for me. Rebecca seemed like more of a match for Sam Malone. I've always liked a more strong headed woman anyway. Yes. You know, I like opinionated women. I don't like. You know, I want, uh, I like bitches, man. Like, no, Trump, in, a, in a very, like, as respectful as I can say it, I like fucking bitches. <laughs> Trump, well, you know the, uh, the, the year after you know, your divorce. You know, the villain in RoboCop, he says, bitches leave. I'm like, yeah. bitches, come on in. Yeah. Come back. No, bitches, come back. Well, you might be, <laughs> be fam- please be mean to me. You, I probably deserve it. <laughs> well, you, you might be familiar the year after your divorce, you do all kinds of, like, self introspection and <laughs> sure. stuff, right? Well, I yeah. figured. Yeah. I figured out, like... What am I doing to uh, put I can't, myself in this But situation? I figured out I can't be with no soft-ass woman because of the women I grew up around. Mm-hmm. That, that, it's the same You're thing. You're used to strong-willed I'm women. I'm the same thing. Like, bitches, come on. Yeah. Like... Yeah, fucking argue with me. Yeah. And don't cry. It's fine. We can have an argument and not cry. Yeah, if I had, if I had a girlfriend or a wife that said, hey, whatever you want, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Yeah. I, I would not know what to do with the 50s housewife. Yep. Yep. Like what? No, like no, like have an opinion. Let's talk about things. The Weedsman Podcast, ChristopherMedia.net. Mary redeemed a fifty thousand dollar cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun with over eighty casino style games to choose from. You too could win life changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to chumbacasino.com and give them a world. That's chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. Eighteen plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. They say that home is where the heart is. Maybe that's why so many fall in love with Big Pine Key and Florida's Lower Keys. With epic ocean views, unspoiled wilderness, sandy beaches, abundant wildlife, RV resorts, and Stock Island's rustic charm, Florida's Lower Keys don't skip a beat. For more about the Lower Keys, visit flakeys.com slash lower keys. Texting privacy policy in terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting rules for occurring automated text marketing messages. Message data rates may apply. Reply stop, opt out. The pandemic has been hard on all our kids. New studies show more than one in three children who started school in the pandemic now need intensive reading help. That's right. Millions of kids in kindergarten through third grade in the United States cannot read at grade level. Here's the good news. Your child can be reading in just 30 days, guaranteed, with Hooked on Phonics. Even if your child has been struggling, Hooked on Phonics will teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. And right now, you can get started for just one dollar text the word grade to 323232 right now hooked on phonics is highly effective and incredibly fun and everything can be done right from home and in less than 20 minutes a day for more than 30 years hooked on phonics has been the proven learn to read program that kids love to use text grade to 323232 and teach your child to read in just 30 days guaranteed text grade to 323232 right now and get started for just one dollar text grade to 323232 now text grade to 323232 Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. 
Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. ChristopherMedia.net The Weedsman Podcast I was watching Oh shit, what is that show called? There's a show on Peacock that yes, has uh, many shows on Peacock It <laughs> has uh, Colin Hanks in it Tom Hanks' kid and what's her name that played Sookie in uh, uh, True Blood Anna Paquin Anna Paquin you think Bill ever got tired of saving Sookie? Like at some point, it was like, so. how many times, bitch, are you going to get yourself <laughs> almost killed? There had to be like yeah, at least one scene that they cut out where he's just rolling his eyes like, oh, Jesus like, Christ. Fucking this. again? A friend of the family. I feel like I've heard about this. It's a. It's based on a true story. Like The woman who it happens to introduces the show. And it's like, this is my story. Guys, I know this seems like way out there. Trust me, this all fucking happened. I do think I've heard about. Oh, I think yeah. Didn't wasn't he on Adam Carolla a few months ago? I was think it? he explained this. Who? Uh, who? Colin Hanks? Yes. I don't like. I've heard about the. Maybe I missed it. Um. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember that one, but it could have been. Or maybe I heard it, someone who was on the show. But yeah, I think I've heard the plot, and it's crazy. I watched uh, like a first episode and a half. And it just reminded me of, because Anna Paquin is very much playing the, uh, the 50s housewife stereotype of like, well, I don't know. We'll have to see what Bob says when he gets home. But yeah, this, uh, this friend of the family that had this 12 year old girl, uh, says he's going to take her to ride horses at his friend's farm and they just disappear. And he takes, he, uh, he he had this all like fucking planned out. Like he had an RV purchased, and they went and hit the road. And he abducts her and makes her think that they've both been abducted by aliens, and that they the aliens want the two of them to reproduce for you know science or whatever the fuck save the human race. I don't know. Take your pick. Like yeah. They, yeah, he, he makes this girl, this young girl, believe that they're, they've both been abducted by aliens so that he can... Mm. Have sex with her? Yes. Gross. Yes. Um, it's not, from what I understand, it's not like super graphic in that respect. Um, I mean, like if if that type of shit is triggering for you, I mean, it's triggering for everyone, but if it's especially triggering for you, I'm sure you wouldn't enjoy this, but it's not like... Yeah, they're, it's not super creepy in that way. I think they handle it well enough, but who knows? Uh, maybe it gets worse. Either way, it's going to leave you feeling like you got a... You need a shower. A thin coat of grease on you. Yeah. But also, it's just the whole time you're like, what are you people doing? <laughs> like, it was. it's just a different time, right? We didn't, you know... If this girl went missing three hours, the fucking FBI, a fucking 12 year old white girl in middle America. Oh. Like she'd be on all over the news. The FBI would be looking for her, you know, and this is like, it goes like a day and a half where the wife was like, no, I'm sure they'll be back. <laughs> day and a half. Yeah. Before they even get the police involved. Jesus. <laughs> like different time, different time. <laughs> And no worries. A stranger left with an RV with my twelve-year-old daughter. Yeah. It's cool. And they don't even know he's got an RV. Like he had the he had the RV. See, they come to the wife and they're, they're like, you know, we don't know where your husband went with our daughter. Do you know anything? And she's like, no, but I'm sure they'll be back. But there was this RV in the storage space that we rent that I've never seen before. That was weird. But don't call the cops. I'm well, sure they'll weird. be back. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be back. You know, I forgot to say about Kirstie Alley. She was fucking funny too. Yeah, she had good comic timing. Not a whole lot of 
a lot of people out there have both like the good comic timing and the looks and the chops and all that. Like she had it, and she had a sense of humor about herself. She cer- she certainly did, especially when she did fat actress. Yeah, yeah, she was very honest about her battles with with her weight and all that stuff. She seemed like a really genuine person. She was interviewed. Uh, I think Adam Carolla had her on a couple times, mm-hmm. and. It was just one of those people that, like, I don't really agree with you per se, uh, but she still seems interesting. She seemed like a genuine person. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, she might have been a Scientologist, but she didn't seem to let that define her. Scientologist and a Trump supporter. Strikes one and two. Yeah. Yeah. She was definitely, like, hardcore conservative. But hey, one of the few people in Hollywood with the balls to actually say it out loud. Because most of the time, you know how you tell somebody in Hollywood's conservative? They don't talk about politics. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, speaking of politics, there were some politics involving uh, cannabis recently in Washington. So a lot of this uh, all has to do with this huge military budget that they're trying to get passed. Yeah, they're getting rid of the vaccine mandate. For the soldiers, but they're not bringing them back? Uh, they're, what, they're getting rid of the vaccine mandate? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. part of it. Well, yeah, the, the symptom mitigator mandate. The National Defense Authorization Act, which is... Uh, that's one of those bills that everybody wants to get their pork attached to because you can't say no to defense spending, apparently. Like, it's just not done, you know. Every once in a while, they'll disagree and have to go back to the drawing board on the on it. But in general, people don't want to vote no on on defense spending because it makes you look weak, I guess. And also, it usually has a lot to do with like pork projects in your state that are building these things that we don't need. You know, supersonic jets to fight terrorism. Yeah, that's how you're going to do it. We're just going to because terrorists travel at Mach one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so the uh the SAFE Act, I think it was. Is that the banking one? I can never keep these straight. This, oh yeah. Secure and fair enforcement. That's what it stands for. I wonder how much fucking time they waste on coming up with these yeah. names. I think it's unpaid interns that do it. Uh yeah, so the SAFE Act was they were they were trying to attach this to the the defense budget. So that they could get that passed. And guess who blocked it? The big turtle himself, Mr. Mitch McConnell, who was uh, bragging about it. We ain't trying to get no marijuana. Now, the marijuana moment has a story in it saying that McConnell took to the Senate floor on Wednesday gloating about how Republicans managed to keep marijuana banking reform out of a large-scale defense bill. Okay. So you're going to brag about something that more than half of your constituents, not the country, but people who vote for Mitch McConnell, more than half of them agree with marijuana legalization in some fashion. Didn't Kentucky vote in medical? Yeah. So that's what, that's what you're fighting. Uh, he said that the lesson must carry over to forthcoming omnibus appropriation legislation that some lawmakers are now looking for as an alternative way to enact cannabis reform. So there's another omnibus bill that they're putting together, and the thought is, well, if we can't get it in the defense spending budget, let's get it in the omnibus, and McConnell's saying that he's going to block that as well. That, I guess, there just apparently is no way. Stop being a dick, Mitch. Uh, McConnell preview previewed his interest in blocking the effort earlier this week, describing the cannabis provision as one of the pet priorities of Democrats that should be kept out of the defense legislation. Yeah, it's not, it's not, there a, are it's red not states a pet. that have legal weed now, Mitch. <laughs> it's, it's not a pet project of the Democrats. There are red states it's, that have <laughs> recreational pot now, Mitch. Red no, states. Nobody in the future is going to look back on this and say, well, thank God that Mitch McConnell stood up and said something like this is, this is a done deal. It's yes. not a question of if, it's when. Yeah. You're not 
putting this genie back in the bottle. No. This is this is a snowball that we've already started to roll downhill, and it's too big to just stop it and push it back up. I'm glad this Democrat-led Congress finally realizes, a quote from McConnell, that defending America is a basic governing duty. It's not some Republican priority that Democrats can demand unrelated go- goodies to be wheeled into. Yeah. Like you don't do that, Mitch. But yeah. Like you've never done that. The military budget is no place for pork, okay, people? This is patriotic spending only. Yeah. No hippies allowed, all right? Take your weed legislation elsewhere. Oh, but if you take it elsewhere, we'll fuck you there too. Or at least try to. And another, you know, this is just another stance that the Republicans can take that don't reflect not only, again, the majority of Americans, but the majority of their own fucking party. Yeah. Pull your own party for once. Find out. Do they want stricter abortion? You know, do they want... You might have a small portion of them that are very loud that are saying this, but if you listen to the rest of the people, they're generally saying no. And that's what they told you this last election. Oh, and even... Uh Look at the current face of the party. We all know the face, the orange face. He never even brought up abortion when he was out there stumping for everybody. Yeah, he knew it was a loser issue. You can't win anybody over with abortion. All you're going to do is attract the person who is already going to vote for you anyway. You might, you know, it's like, I think they just look at it like they're getting free advertising. If we, you know, think look like we're doing something about abortion, then these groups of people out there that are really passionate about it are going to, like, stump for us. Like, it's it's like this ship has sailed, guys, all right? This ain't the late 80s anymore, all right? All right it, it's over, okay? It's, it's just like with weed. We, we've made the decision. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of weed, back to it, uh, Pearl Mutter, the uh, representative from Colorado, had something to say about this. Saying we'll be immediately getting into the work to attach the reform to the pending omnibus spending legislation, the exact same thing that McConnell already said he was going to block. Though he added that he's lost sleep over recent setbacks and has quote unquote unrepeatable things to say about the Senate over their inability to advance the bill. It's quote, I'm not giving up on this darn thing yet. Oh, settle down. Oh. Uh, Said the, the congressman who is retiring at the end of this session, <laughs> adding that he will need bicameral and bipartisan support if, quote, we try to attach it to the appropriations bill. Yeah. You know, this is one thing that fucking Penn could fix. This is one instance that Penn could be useful. Yeah. And what do you, what do you got to lose, Joe? What do you have to lose at this point? You don't want to go down in history as the fucking weed president? Come on. You won't even, what? you won't even remember that you were anyway. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, no matter what you do, your legacy is going to be that you weren't Trump. Yeah. That is your legacy. Live with it. All right. So this is a fucking free ride, man. Like, just coast. You don't got to do shit now. Just fucking get, and, and, and you know, and you don't even sign to, off on this weed and shit. You don't even have to. Le- you know what, Joe? You don't even have to legalize it. Just use the pen to take it off Schedule One. Yes, that's how you do it. Clears all this shit up. Yeah. And the legislation just flows. Just take it off Schedule One. Don't even have to be the weed president. Just be the president who took it off Schedule One. Let the next guy be the weed president. Well, the. The golden pen, the great resolute desk. Could make this all. Yeah, just a lot imagine easier. and imagine the dank memes that we'll get out of it too. <laughs> you know, like he's gonna he's gonna sign it and then he's gonna hold the pen up with a confused look on his face and everyone's gonna Photoshop it as a blunt <laughs> <laughs> or a bong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dab rig. <laughs> We need some more. We need some more photo ops with him and, and Barry. I want some more Biden memes. <laughs> so we were talking. I think, can't remember if it was last week or the week before about like high potency gummies 
It wasn't yes. there. What was the place that had like uh, a, was it a 200 milligram and a single gummy? Somewhere awesome. Uh, but there is a story out of Minnesota, which was interesting because Minnesota has much more restrictive rules than most places when it comes to their, uh, their edibles, especially. They have a thousand milligram gummy. Uh, according to Minnesota law, the products must not contain more than five milligrams of hemp derived THC in a single serving or more than 50 milligrams per package. So we can get that. Well, we got four times that limit, I think, here in Michigan, because now I can buy 200 milligram packages, usually for 10 or 12 bucks, too. So the price is going down and the quantities are definitely going up. I want to do 400 once just to see. They say that's when you hallucinate yeah. at 400. Yeah, I've never gotten that. I don't know. Like, edibles definitely hit different, but like. Yeah, I've done shrooms, I've done acid. I can't do. I can do. If I space it out, I can do a fair amount of edibles, but I got to really space it out. Uh, all at once, if I do like 60 all at once. I'll just feel crusty and then want to sleep. Anything more than that is just kind of a waste, I think. See, a hundred is my uh, f- was is my flying dose. Yeah, figuratively, figuratively and literally. <laughs> yeah, we both got off the ground. Although I'll tell you, like I said, I, I, when I did two hundred and I was on a plane, and maybe it was just because it was the plane environment, but I was like, too high, man, too high. When I did two hundred and flew. Like 200 yeah. is too much. See, this article, they say in most legal adult use states, uh, serving is limited to 5 or 10 milligrams of THC. 5 to 10 can hit like one or two glasses of wine. Yeah, I guess. More efficient, though. Doses above 20 to 50 milligrams are usually enjoyed by consumers with a higher cannabis tolerance. Yeah, I don't, I don't really fuck with just 10 milligrams, though. Like it's no. it's got to be twenty or or more, otherwise I'm just like I'll just hit my pen a couple times. It'll be the same difference. Well, twenty is like a joint. Yeah, uh, all of which is to say, a hundred millig- uh, hundred milligram single dose gummy is delivering a powerful THC punch. Yes. Yeah. Correct. True statement. Now, uh, so in Minnesota here, they had to. They had a lawsuit against Northland Vapor, uh, which is a cannabis company. Being too awesome. They had to shut down their. Well, I think they just made them pull their uh, edible products that were sold under the name Wonky Weeds. Terrible name. Yeah, it's a really horrible. That's name. why they. That's why they. That's why they were charged. Really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they had to pull their products because they tested them and found that. These gummies had per package two thousand five hundred milligrams. Yeah, like I said, for being too awesome. <laughs> so if you got ten candies, right? That's just that's what you, that's two fifty per shit. <laughs> two fifty per gummy. Dude, I ate these gummies and the walls are bleeding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Like, who is that for? Let's Tommy see. Chong? Northland Vapor attorney Tyler Leverington said in a statement that the company tried to work with the state to comply with the law, but someone decided Northland should be made an example. Yeah, but also you're saying that your shit didn't test for 2,500 milligrams? Uh, recreational marijuana itself remains illegal, yes. Let's see. They have an additional argument. Oh, they're sick. Oh, because this is all Delta Nine THC derived. That's what oh. th- that's what they're saying. Like, yeah, this is way over the limit for the medical program, but this isn't medical. This isn't. This is non regulated Delta Nine THC. Yeah. And I wonder what I wonder what twenty five hundred milligrams of Delta Nine would feel like. Nothing. Yeah, maybe. Who knows. Hey, it's supposed to be like the diet weed, right? Mm-hmm. So what if it's, it's, it's ten times less potent than? So it's two fifty. Yeah, it's probably about the I'm, same. That's I'm, probably what I'm they were thinking. Well, that is probably what they were thinking. Like, let's it, it's supposed to be diet. We'll just crank up the dosage so that it's like, yeah, diet. 
Right, know. right, right. You know. It's like, oh, I'm just going to drink a wine cooler, 12 wine coolers. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a light beer, so I had 40 of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you better get the Natty Light, because I'm going to drink that whole thing. <laughs> that whole case. Leafly had its uh, list of the top, the 10 best-selling weed strains of the year. Oh, it's top 10. Yeah, it's about <laughs> right. It's top 10 list time. It's the end of the year. Uh, let's see. Most of these uh, are shit that I've heard of. Usually when we get these lists, I'm like, and you know, these are all like weird crossbred names, but yeah. I'm actually, this is probably shit that you've purchased. Lay them on me. Take a guess on, on what some of them might be. Well, do we need some game show music? <laughs> I don't know if they actually put these in order. Doesn't say if they're going for ten to one or. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, a strawberry cough. That's always a. Is that on there? Uh, no. Blueberry. The list. Nope. Uh. 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 uh OG Kush. OG Kush is not on the list. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, this is now just how many strains can do you name? do <laughs> No. <laughs> Gelato. Yes. Oh, there we you go. You got a winner. Gelato has its place in the proverbial Cannabis Hall of Fame for its grassy vanilla cream pla- palette. We named it Strain of the Year in 2018 for its flavors, eye-catching royal purple buds, and deep, deeply euphoric chill. Oh, yeah. Wedding Cake is on there as well. Blue, uh, Blue Dream. Lemon Haze. Lemon Haze is not. Ice Cream Cake. Original Glue. I guess with that... That original glue, that's Gorilla Glue number four. So that's not... Like, OG Kush is... Isn't that original glue? I don't remember. Kush? <laughs> no, it's Ocean the, Grown. Oh, Ocean Grown. I don't know. Maybe it does. Pineapple Express. Oh, still duh. popular. Sour Diesel. I was going to say, uh, you know what I was going to say? Is any kind of diesel on there? Yeah, you got to have a diesel in there. <clears throat> Those diesels were really, really big a uh, while back. Uh, Purple Punch. Mac. M-A-C. I don't know that one. I've never heard that one. No cap, the strain smacks. Mac. Hit the cannabis scene, since, <laughs> much like the trucks. Hard, due to its pungent garlic terpenes with hints of citrus and the ability to lay the most experienced stoners out. If you're in pain or staying in for the night, this elegant stew of starfighter, Colombian, and alien cookies, bred by the incomparable Capulator, does the trick. Oh, it's Girl Scout cookies on there. Uh, I don't see. No, I don't think so. Purple Punch. Did I say that one? Durban Poison. I've never heard of that one. I have. We smoked it. We have had Durban Poison. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, that's a straight sativa. <clears throat> uh, G from Lism considers it to be like Mick Jagger or Gene Simmons. You still love them even as they've passed their peak popularity because they keep rocking. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's all weed to me. Yeah. So, you know, like, it, the last one on there was Durban Poison, but again, like, it doesn't appear to be a ranked list. Which, boo to that. Like, grow some balls and rank your list, man. Right. Yeah, I want to know the number one strain. How else are we going to argue about this shit? 2022. Unless you fucking rank it, you know? It's just a stoner attitude. Hey, man, whatever's number one to you, man. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, this is from Leafly, so they've got the numbers. They know. It says, at Leafly, we love to keep a firm finger on the the cannabis pulse. What's hot, what's hype, and what people are actually buying. 
This is Leafly's best selling strains of 2022. So it's their. Also, oh, it's not a top 10 list, just as best selling. Fair enough. Well, yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's what I'm saying is they no, have saying you the data. want a top 10 list. Well, they, they, if they had, yeah, but if it's best selling, then it should be ranked by, there is a number one, right? There has to be, unless they tied. They're all tied. They're all tied. It's 2022. One. Everyone yep. gets, everyone. Everybody equal. spent the exact same amount of money on all these strains. Yes. <laughs> Equity. Last thing to share with you before we leave. This is not cannabis related, but it just cracked me up. Some some young girl who is a Baskin Robbins employee posted a TikTok, a TikTok uh, that was viewed six point seven million times. Where she is getting, she's working the register, right, and she's taking the money from the customer and kind of looking confused at the money, and then looking at the customer, and then looking at the money, and it says on it, when the total is three twenty five. And they give me four dollars, then proceed to say, wait, I have a quarter, but I already rung it up in the register. That's, that's, that's the American education system. That's, kids. that's their biggest, that's the, that's the hardest thing you have to deal with in the day. That somebody gave you extra change to try and round it up to an even. Like, you know what, even if you couldn't do the math that quick in your head, you it's a know, fucking dollar! You know what, <laughs> you know what they're after, right? Why would they give you, more money unless they were after a solid bill instead of a bunch yeah, of change Yeah, they're going, back. hey, give me one of my dollars back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. This is the American public education system, everybody. That's the thing. Yeah. Yes, you punched $4 in, in the register. And yes, the register tells you that you must give this customer back 75 cents. Your drawer will balance out. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. That's the thing. Like, it's not even like it's a five and some change. It's four singles that she was given, right? Because there's no other way to give somebody four bucks in cash in America. Correct. It was four singles. If you want to talk and pay Remember, they tried to do that dollar coin, and yep. we shed on that thing immediately. The guy gives her four singles and then gives her a quarter, and she's confused about that, right? Just take one of those singles away, and what do you have? $3.25, which was the total. There you go, Common Core Math. <laughs> You don't even have to do math. That's all visual. Mm-hmm. You can just look at it and go, oh, yeah, this and this. Oh, yeah, look at that. But I'm saying this girl was taught Common Core Math, and she can't do that yep. right in front of her face. Yep. You know, because you know what the problem with Common Core Math is? is that not that it doesn't work. It's that everybody learns different. And you also, you have and, 900 extra steps. You, 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 you do, it's the least efficient way to get to the solution. She says, they act like we have a reverse time button on the damn register. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, they're acting like you have basic math skills. Yes. I mean, there, there could be another commentary not- of like, here you go, this is victimhood society. <laughs> Like, look what this person's doing to me. Yeah, they're, they're doing this to me. They're, they're asking for the impossible. They're going against what the computer says. The computer says the numbers. I don't make up the numbers. The computer tells me the numbers. She'll be a great subject for our digital overlords in the future. (laughs) They'll love her. Yeah, I was just following orders. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Okay, Kanye. (laughs) He had a week last week when when both Candace Owens and Alex Jones are going, hey, man. uh, Like... Maybe it's time for a, a look in the mirror, Kanye. Yeah. Both two known wackos want to distance themselves from you. Yeah, it's gotten to the point where it's not even fun anymore. Dude, he's, he, he, it is mental illness. I lived with yeah. mental illness. Yeah. Dude, it, I hear it in his voice. That is a manic person. Yeah, and like that's what crazies go for, is the racism, right? That's what, you know, people who lose their shit or however you want to say it people who like you know deal with uh i don't know schizophrenia shit like that like they go at it's like illuminati the jews you know whatever like that's crazy people talk 
There's an episode of Scrubs where I mean, there's some real, there's some real anti-Semitism in the country, obviously. It's an episode of Scrubs where the doctor's taking the interns on on rounds, and he's the, this guy has dementia, and he's like, who do and uh, he's like, but he's a teensy bit racist, and he's like, who do I hate? He's like, immigrants, Mister So and So. Why do I hate them? Because they're stealing our jobs, stealing our jobs. <laughs> he had to be but, reminded. Yeah, yeah. He had to be reminded. Why he was racist? Yeah, but he's harmless. Like, what? What is he gonna do? Start a movement? <laughs> you know, like he's going well, to in the true. hospital. It's just old guy in a bed, it's not, right? Yeah, it's not. Well, a, that's that's the point, though. Like, it's not that's, a guy with a following like Kanye. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, the problem with Kanye is that we have this cult of personality that. You know, we, like people will believe the shit that he says. Well, that's it's, here's the thing. It's, it's a it's a trifecta of suck. Is he's rich, he's mentally ill, and he's surrounded by people who won't tell him no. Yeah, so he's not like the mental illness part is going to stop him from is not going to stop him when the when it starts hitting the wallet really hard, right? Because he's just going to keep going. Like, I don't think money means anything to him, right? It's all just power. And he thinks that the power comes from his personality. And so that just, that's an endless you know, every, well of, of power. Everyone keeps So how can he go away? He had massive fucking head trauma when he got in that car accident. We all keep forgetting this. Remember I when didn't. he had his mouth wired shut? No. I didn't know. Oh yeah, that's that yeah. his song through the wire. He raps through his fucking uh, <laughs> jaw being wired shut. No, yeah, that's why it's called that. Yeah, because <laughs> he's yeah because his mouth was wired shut when he recorded it. Interesting. Yeah, that is wild. But yeah, everyone I did can, not know that. Yeah, so everyone forget he had massive head trauma early in life. No shit. Couple that with you know. Uh, He's, you could track when he started going nuts when his mom died, you know. Th- yeah, because she, she, like, that was sudden. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a botched surgery, right? Didn't she go yeah, to Mexico? She got, like, discount plastic surgery. No. Died for those lip fillers. World's going to hell in a handbasket. That's cool, because we're just smoking weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just look at him and be like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. I learned today that uh, before the sun flares up and disintegrates us, the oxygen will just disappear from the earth. Well, so we won't even know. We're going to suffocate before we burn to death, yeah. So I think I have that to look forward to. Well, we'll probably be dead. It's going to happen, yeah. Everybody's going to be dead. It's billions of years in the future. (laughs) It's one one of those things like, don't worry about it. (laughs) Yeah. If we haven't figured something out by the, the year two billion, then I guess we deserve to suffocate. That's it. It's over. For now. For now. All right. Well, follow us at the Weeds Before Twenty on Twitter. I believe it's the same thing on Facebook, where you can like us and share us, and go to ChristopherMedia.net, the PayPal button, and the Amazon banner. It's that time of year to help us out. And wherever you listen to us, rate us, review us, uh, that's how you help people find the show. Uh, please and thank you. Thank you for listening. Stay high. Stay high. Redeemed a fifty thousand dollar cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun with over eighty casino style games to choose from. You too could win life changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to chumbacasino.com and give them a whirl. That's chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. Eighteen plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. 
Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. Here's to the great American settlers, the millions of you who settled for unsatisfying jobs because they pay the bills. Of course, there is something else you could do if you got something to say. Start a podcast with Spreaker from iHeart and unleash your creative freedom. Maybe even earn enough money to one day tell your old boss, hey, I'm no settler, I'm an explorer. Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Hustle on over today. The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net.